before our group presentation looked at the grievance and arbitration process, uh, we looked comprehensively at the relevance of uh, the grievance and arbitration process as a course of action in today's work environment. We also analyzed the different steps involved in both grievance and arbitration uh, and the obstacles that may arise during these processes. So the first thing we looked at was um, a definition of what grievance is and as it noted there, as highlighted by HR Daily Advisor, a grievance is a formal employee complaint and usually comes about when an employee feels that you know they've been negatively affected by the employer not holding up to their terms or you know their end of the bargain as far as it relates to their employment agreement um the grievance could come from an individual or a group and it could relate to a specific contract term and and really what a grievance does you know because employees need an opportunity to to express their dissatisfaction if they're not pleased about terms and conditions that are being breached in their contract or whatever they had originally agreed to with their employers and having a grievance policy can ensure that their concerns are heard and that formal grievance policy can send the message that a business respects their workers and has a policy for dealing with issues fairly um, we went on to look at arbitration and the definition for arbitration here says it's a form of alternative dispute resolution used in the place of litigation in the hope of settling a dispute without the cost and time of going to court um, wherein the parties to the dispute refer it to one or more persons which are referred to as the arbitrators by whose decision they agree to be bound so in other words the arbitrators are going to be the ones to say all right this is our final decision and this is what we are going to agree on so if we go ahead and put both those terminologies together so basically we're looking at the grievance procedure which lays out the rules and methods for documenting presenting and settling a workplace dispute the the meeting steps are usually defined in the contract between the union and management and the first step in many procedures is to pinpoint where the grievance began. You know, for example, with a supervisor or a direct report who then must determine, along with the union rep, whether or not the grievance is valid. And in cases where the grievance is unresolved, the case is escalated to the next level. The next level is where arbitration would have taken place. And this is generally um, intended to streamline the process and decrease the cost when compared to resolving a dispute in court. But as noted above, arbitrations are not all run the same way. With some important exceptions, arbitration is generally thought to be more informal than litigation and is typically, typically intended to provide a more streamlined, time-saving and cost-effective method for resolving a potential legal dispute between an employee and so as noted before, you know, disputes will arise and when they arise, opportunity, um, employees should be given the opportunity to file a grievance. And as with any process, the grievance process is, is no different. There is a typical sequence of events that must be followed. Uh, the process is composed of seeking redress of the grievance through progressively higher levels of authority and most often culminates in binding arbitration. Uh, first and foremost, a typical grievance pr procedure begins with an employee presenting a problem to his or her immediate supervisor within a certain time period after the offending event has occurred. Secondly, the supervisor, supervisor then has to set, set an amount of time to either respond or send the grievance on to be addressed by the head of the department. At this point, union representatives enter the negotiations on behalf of the employee. If the situation is not resolved, the grievance continues up the chain of command to the president of the local union. Uh, if the labor union fails to follow the procedure at any point, the contract usually specifies that it must drop the grievance. Uh, conversely, if the, company, if the company is usually obligated to resolve the grievance in the employee's favor, if management fails to follow the procedure outlined in the collective bargaining agreement and finally if the situation still cannot be resolved 
the final step in the grievance process is for both parties to present their side to a pre-designated arbitrator. Once it gets to the arbit arbitration stage, it also follows a series of steps. Uh, the, num the first step is the filing and initiation step, which basically says the arbitration case begins. Uh, one party submits a demand for arbitration. Uh, the other party, which is respondent, is notified by the arbitral tribunal and the deadline is set for a response. Uh, secondly, the arbitrator is selected. So the arbitral tri tribunal, tribunal works with the parties to identify and select an arbitration based on the criteria determined by the parties. Then there is a preliminary hearing where the arbitrator conducts a preliminary hearing with both parties to discuss the issues in the case and procedural matters such as witnesses, dispositions, sharing information and other matters. Then there's information exchange and preparation. So the parties then prepare for presentation and exchange information. Then there is a hearing. At the, at the hearing, both parties may present testimony and evidence to the arbitrator. Uh, unless the case is very complex, this is usually the only hearing before the arbitrator. Then we go to the post-hearing submissions. Uh, this is where the parties present any additional documents or documentations they have as allowed by the arbitrator. Then there is the award and this is where this is the final stage basically where the arbitrator does the closes the record on the case and issues a decision including an award if it is applicable. So while it may seem that way, uh, grievance procedures do not have to be formal or elaborate. So on whatever form they take, the procedures are really intended to allow companies to hear and resolve complaints in a timely and cost-effective manner before they result in litigation. And knowing that formal procedures are available often encourages employees to raise their concerns uh, or com questions, question company policies before major problems develop. And it, it also tends to make managers less likely to ignore these problems because they know that upper management may become involved through the process or the grievance process. Also, in a union setting, grievance procedures help to protect employees against arbitrary decisions of management regarding discipline or promotions or benefits. They also provide labor unions and employees with a formal process for enforcing the provisions of their contracts. So al although having grievance procedures in place is important in both a union and non-union setting, companies must support their written, um, written policies with consistent action. So if, you know, if they hope to maintain good employee relation relations. To make the grievance process work, management and the union have to approach it with the attitude that it serves the mutual interest of management, employees and the union. So in closing, you know, we really, the, the, the grievance and arbitration process, for it to be effective, you know, both employee and employer really need to be looking at it as a, a positive force that can facilitate open discussion of issues. Um, and we really, as employers, we really ought to be, you know, encourage employees who are hesitant to, in using the process out of fear to really you know, look at it as a means for airing their issues and as a means for management to really open up and listening to these issues and trying to get them resolved as quickly or as easily as possible without having to escalate these disputes to court hearings that are really more costly when you look at it from the business point of view. So, um, you know, we, we want to thank you for listening to our presentation and Hopefully, something new has been passed on to someone.